Hey guys, Master J2001 here today, and I've got a very quick tutorial uh, showing those of you that have no idea how to use ID masks in Blender how to use them, and those of you that are struggling to use glare nodes with ID masks how to fix that issue. Because as you'll see on the screen right now, plugging the ID mask into the glare node and then the glare node into the rest of the scene to mix it all in has absolutely no effect. So I'm going to show you guys how to fix that, and um, yeah, so let's get right into this. So I've got this little um, thing set up right here. Uh, pretty much all it is, just got a bit of gloss on there and um, parts of it are emitting light. So what we want to do is um, for the parts of the emitting light, we want to be able to, in the compositor, isolate these values so that we can muck around with different um, glow effects and all this. So what we want to do is um, just make any sort of object you want and uh, give it an emission shader, um, any color you want, and a strength from anywhere from about 8 to 12 uh, will work quite well. So we'll go down to the settings tab here, and we want to change this pass index to 1. And you'll see where that comes in handy later. Now along with this, what we want to do is if we go into our scene tab, go down to passes, we want to tick the material index, and once again you'll see what that does later when we go into the compositor. And just to make it look a little bit nicer, what we'll do is we'll change the world or the global value to um, pure black for the background. It just makes the emission value a bit easier to see. So just render that up now. Okay, cool. So now this is rendered. What we'll do is we'll hop into the compositor. Okay, use node auto, not auto render backdrop. Uh, and we'll just grab a viewer node and plug that into there. Okay, so for those of you familiar with the compositor, um, normally all you'd see is your image alpha and Z value, um, but now you'll notice we've got this index MA, which is the index material uh, that we clicked over here before, the material index. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna like isolate uh, the blue value. So what we wanna do is if we get an ID mask, in the scene here, okay, and we want to grab this index material and plug it into the ID value here. Now, if you guys have Node Wrangler, uh, if you don't, I'll leave a, uh, leave a link down to it in the description below so you can download it. Pretty much what it allows you to do is makes your node work so much easier because you can go Control Shift and then left click on something and preview what that node's doing to your scene. So you'll see at the moment, if we do that to our ID mask, this doesn't look right. <laughs> this looks like it's completely screwed up our scene and uh, everything everything has gone wrong, uh, but actually hasn't. So you'll see the index value here is at zero. Uh, so I believe that's actually trying to pick up the the metal um, the metal shader that I have here because that would have a pass index of zero and I don't know. I guess the world settings whatever index passes error i don't exactly know but that's not what we want that's what i do know we don't want that so luckily earlier we did distinguish this emission value to have a pass index of one so if we change this index value here to one you'll see come on you'll see that now so the white parts are what uh, selected that the emission uh, of this torus knot is now selected so that's very good and uh, so that's pretty much what we wanted. And so that's how, that's practically how you'd use an ID mask. And uh, then from there, it's fairly simple. I mean, you could start to add blur nodes in um, and start to, you know, mug around with different effects and all that. So I'll just give you guys a quick example here. So there you go. So you see you've blurred all that and then you could mix it into the rest of the scene. I'm going add. Um, like that, so now you've got a bit of a glow going around it, and you know you could then start to change the colors by putting a multiply node in between and uh, just recoloring what that blur value is going to be. So I mean that looks pretty good, but um, the what's it the glare node? That's what it is. The glare node could do that for us so so much easier without us having to fiddle around with. Um, all of those values, 
also it opens up a lot more options for us to you know mix glare nodes with blur nodes to get completely different glow effects and everything um and so as you'll see at the moment if we you know get the good old glare node going here um and put it before or we'll put it after this id mask it actually like doesn't do anything it's really weird um but there is a very very simple fix to this um and to be honest with you, I, I don't understand why this works. All I know is that it does, and it's an absolute miracle that it does because it allows you to actually use an ID mask with a glare note. So what we're gonna do, we'll get a mix shader in the scene and just put it in between the ID mask and the glare note here. So what we wanna do is you'll have the ID mask, take it out of the top um, image value and plug it into the bottom have your um, image from the render layer control the factorial and then change this middle value to pure black and you'll see now look at that we've now got the glare node actually taking effect on um, the selected part of the id mask and so now like literally you can go through and do whatever you want and that looks really really weird um, but yeah, so now you have that control of using um, an ID mask with a glare node. So it's, it's very simple, very, very simple setup. It's just a mix node in between um, with a black value in the middle between the factorial and the bottom image value. And um, yeah, just like that. And then same as before, you know, you could throw a multiply node in between all of that. I think that's plugged into the wrong thing. Uh, there, so you now you could throw that in between and then start to colorize it to make it look correct. So you would change the value of the glow. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's a uh, fairly simple fix and you can now use your glare node with an ID mask. Well guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Blender tutorials. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.